You're an optimist. Well, how about the two students who came? What questions do you have? So I have a question about project. Uh, like uh, Greg, you suggested to take a look about uh, uh, Twitter data to get directly into uh, my project. Right? So sorry, uh, from the Kaggle. I'm struggling to download. I downloaded uh, data, but only CSV file. I'm not able to download it into uh, my project. Maybe I'll send a separate note for that and then you can help me in technical how to get the CSV file. Is it okay? Sorry, can you hear me? You were rather faint, so I was just switching on my app, my volume. Oh, sorry. The uh, so I, I repeat the question. So um, uh, there was an issue that uh, he we suggested uh, that he downloads the original data from Kaggle. The um, uh, the thing is, is the Kaggle data is in a CSV file format, and uh, we recommended to write a download function so that the CSV file is being downloaded via his Python program into his local directory where he's doing his analysis. He seemed to have issues with with this download function. Uh, my suggestion would be that uh, you post this question openly okay. in, into Piazza, not even just to the, uh, to the uh, TAs. And okay. Vibasa will be taking a look into this. You can even make a link to your program that you have developed to download this data and why it's not working. Sure, that helps. And, okay. and, yeah. and um, if the data has to be downloaded by hand, there are some certain websites which um, check if you um, are like a robot, basically, if you write a program that downloads the data that may require authentication. I don't believe that Kaggle is, is a website like this, uh, but uh, uh, that can be, can be helped. And then the other thing is, is, is the download function that you or may, that other people write can be openly shared in class. So if someone has already okay. a, a function that is working, uh, there is no one use. to re reinvent that wheel, just re and reuse that function. And um, um, you know, focus your time on your, uh, on your um, project. Just the thing that you need to do is, is, is if you were to find such a function from someone else, you need to be creating a citation in, the, in your report Oh, by the way, here's the code from which I've copied this. And uh, you need to put the name of the student in the acknowledgement so that we know, okay, there is something there that you have reused from another student. Sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I will tell, uh, like, I'm going to download uh, three files. And once it is downloaded, only the CSV file is not converting. Maybe I'll post and then my code to enter the group and then. That, that, that's correct. If you post your code, the bartha can re rerun it and okay. uh, can download the CSV file. Now, if you're using requests, you have to make sure that you don't save the data as text, but as raw data. Okay. So you, have, okay. you have to read the manual for requests because requests has um, uh, the mechanism to to convert the data automatically you, uh, to UTF-8 or to save it as a raw data file. And you have to, in this particular case, save it as a raw data file. Sure, okay, okay, that helps. Thank you. 
I'll do it uh, today afternoon around, and uh, I think yeah, I'll be good. Maybe uh, after that, I, I have some other questions in my project, like uh, that I'll post separately because you said uh, um, like we may need more data because I don't know that Twitter data, whatever we are using is kind of like four months or five months old, and looking at right now the elections, a lot of data we have, and I'm not able to find the proper data set. Uh, maybe I'll reach out to you. Yeah, so uh, remember that I also posted uh, um, a link to the IONI website where you can find past Twitter data from uh, years back that you can uh, utilize. Okay. They even have a mechanism to uh, upload a function request uh, into their portal. And you could be uh, using a request call from Python to even activate that. Or you oh, do okay. it by hand and download the data by hand but you have to describe how you download the data and how, what query you issue to uh, get that particular data query. So that post is in Piazza, right? Uh, where you uh, that it? post I have, I believe, done in Piazza. If it's not done in Piazza, I, I think I have sent it to you directly. Okay, thanks. Thank Can't you. find it, uh, just, uh, just uh, send another query. I believe I have posted uh, uh, the link to the IONI website uh, openly. Then naturally, okay. when you take currently, I mean, the election is still going on. And there is a lot of Twitter data currently being produced. And certainly what you what you can do is, is, is if you have a Twitter um, 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 a Twitter developer account, you can get actually the tweets uh, from the public feed, which includes 10% of all feeds from, from the Twitter data. And uh, you can naturally redirect that into a file. That's something that the TAs would not have an access to. If you do that kind of stuff, you have to write this in into your report and you have to contact the TAs uh, to figure out if you need to be storing that data in a, in a uh, Google Drive uh, location. But that is not, not a big deal, right? Uh, yes. Okay. So, so all of this stuff can be done. You can make it easy. You can make it super complicated. You can make it very sophisticated. Uh, just make sure you communicate. Yeah, sure. Thanks a lot. That helps. Okay. We have a couple of students. I mean, how about the two other students? Do you have any questions? No, I'm just here to see if anything interesting pops up in other questions. Okay, that's a good thing to do. So I suggest we start at, uh, uh, at uh, 35 and I will be starting with um, the FAQ that I have posted and I will be reviewing where we should be in the project. And um, I'm not sure, Jeffrey, you are recording this. this is correct. Yes, I am recording this. So your, your words, I, we can post it for the other 5,000 students who are not here. Excellent. I love that idea. <laughs> so. And uh, by the way, uh, I don't know, do you, uh, Sudhir, do you have a Twitter developer account or do you don't have one? I didn't create a developer account. Uh, How long did yeah. it take you to get that account? That's, I don't think because it's very easy and we just need authentication key from there, right? I can try if you want to try. No, no, uh, in my case, um, uh, it took me over four weeks to get my account. Oh my God, okay, I never tried. I thought it is kind of like Google only because I always enter Google API key, like. Well, maybe, may, maybe my access is a little bit more advanced. I don't know, but uh, it, it took a very long time to get that approval. So don't assume that you can do this the day before the project is due. So, oh, okay. 
So Otherwise, I can ask uh, Vivasa to get that uh, port to download the data. <laughs> I don't want yeah. to go around Twitter account again. <laughs> Okay, we have uh, 9.35. I think we should get going so that you guys who are here um, uh, can uh, leave as soon as we are done. Uh, so there are two important uh, posts that I have posted to Piazza. Uh, we had one student that actually complained there are too many posts on Piazza. I would like to comment to this. When we are taking in, uh, a, a class in person, you have hundreds of uh, comments of the professor uh, like, for example, Jeffrey gives his, his lecture and, and, you know, and he has 45 minutes to an hour comments um, that you need to be listening to. Um, I have counted the posts on Piazza and we have less than 10 posts per week per average, or much less than even in some weeks. And so I don't think that it's too much asked to uh, read all Piazza posts that are coming in. And some of them may be more interesting than others but it will be up to you to evaluate if they are relevant for you. Um, you can also search in Piazza. There is a search here. You can search for tip and it will be listing you all the Piazza posts that have a tip in it. You can search for, for example, Leoni. Um, and uh, here it looks like that I didn't uh, um, post something uh, for this, but I can search for Twitter. So these would be uh, all the posts related to Twitter data that are showing showing out. So Piazza is very comfortable for you guys to search things through. And you can also use it openly between other students. So you don't have to just communicate with between me and or, or Jeffrey and Vibatha uh, in a private post, but you can also ask public questions to other people or discuss a topic that may be interesting for everybody. So when we are, um, so I posted in the morning the FAQ, I went through the entire Piazza uh, website and I believe I have copied uh, all um, uh, FAQs related to the project into a single web page that I've posted onto the cyber training website. So when you go to the report web page, you will see this here and uh, there is this particular FAQ. So if you, if you open this in a new tab, then we have this other thing maintained. Uh, literally, uh, here we, we have the FAQs. I have included the table of contents, which is automatically generated so that you can maybe finding some information. So let's just go quickly to the, uh, through the questions. Yes, do you have to read every Piazza post? Yes, yes. I find something that is not correct. Well, here in this FAQ, you can edit it here. Where to get help? Uh, Vibatha has updated his, uh, that his information about when he has office hours. The office hours are always in Piazza at this particular link. There's no other location. If a TA posts um, an update, I cannot do the, the, the um, office hours today. He has to also update this particular page so that it's communicated to all students in a consistent way. If, if they don't do this, uh, you can complain to Jeffrey about it and he may uh, uh, stop payment of the TA, right? So that's uh, that's, that's right. That's the... <laughs> As they're both my students, they might uh, jeopardize their PhD. That's right. So um, do you have to work weekly on the project? Yes, you do. Because if you don't do this, then you have to week the next week more uh, heavily and the, the TAs don't have necessarily the time to review your project. So it's highly recommended that you work every week on your project. When are updates due? Uh, updates due are typically a Monday at midnight. Uh, so just make sure that this is the case because I'm uh, after midnight, the first thing I do is I pull all requests and I try to republish it if I haven't been falling asleep from exhaustion of looking at your reports, okay? Um, how do you define the project? Um, uh, there are some students that haven't yet defined their projects. You guys have done this, so I will not go in into this in much more detail, but I would like to emphasize this is a big data class and that requires a project with analysis. It's mandatory for graduate students. Um, undergraduates have the ability to do the project without programming, but in this case, it's just called a report. 
uh, one of the things that you need to be naturally focusing on is, is this is big data and an analy uh, anal uh, analysis step that you need to be demonstrating. Um, so it's not sufficient to just describe an AI method. You have to relate this to big data somehow in your report. Uh, how's the project directory looking like? The project directory, I've posted this before. It looks like the following. You have a project, project MD file, the BIP file in there. This is an optional thing. I highly recommend that you use Jabref because it makes the uh, management of the bibliographies much easier. The plan.md file is currently in the project.md, but once you do the final submission, you take the plan out and uh, you put it in into its own files. All images are in an image directory. All codes are in a code directory. These are recommendations. The only thing that's a must is the project.md, but we recommend, and the images directory. Um, uh, and we recommend that you organize your project in this way. Large data must not be stored in GitHub. And in order to provide this, uh, to, to prevent this, you may want to add the project data to your .git ignore file. Um, if you don't know how to do this, um, do a um, uh, Google query, what is a git ignore file? You should be able to find that out and modify that. Uh, this way uh, it doesn't actually get gets added by accident to your um, GitHub repository. You can even explicitly name the files if you'd like to. Okay, file question here. Uh... Yeah. So if, once you know, I download the data, I can add it to Git Ignore also, right? If I struggle with uh, any uh, CSV file, is it okay? Yes, you can okay, also fine. add uh, project slash star dot CSV. Okay. Uh, and then all the CSV files will not be added. Okay. So yeah, that if makes you do sense. this in Git Ignore, we 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 get we have the benefit because we we actually use your direct uh, directory. We get the benefit of using your Git Ignore file. Okay. Thanks. Then file names, we had one student, uh, which I didn't know was possible that you can actually break GitHub uh, in such a form that it's almost impossible to do something on it. When you put actually a, an, an apostrophe into the file name, it has some nasty effects. For example, on my Macintosh, when I download your directory, I have really some, some bad side effects. And uh, file names should be all lowercase, Id ideally. Sometimes in Python, you have class file names that need to be capitalized, but in general, use all lower cases. Here's an example for a file name that has multiple errors, capital letters, spaces, apostrophe, and .png in capital letters. We don't want to see this. We just want to see normal uh, things. The project proposal, there is a sample that we have provided. I will click on the sample right now. When you go to the sample, the sample will show you the raw file we have seen some students not going into the raw file and just looking at other people's um, project reports and pasting and copying HTML and pasting and copying what the website renders. And all of this is wrong. You just go in the raw, uh, raw HTML and you see here how this particular thing is formatted. And this is a good format for your reports. One of the things that's important is, is, is you have this page info here, which is a begin and a page info, which is an end. You have the table of contents here, and you have the contents here as a single word, and you have here an abstract without a number in, in the headline, and you write your abstract. You have here how you should be citing yourself as an author, and there is this, um, this hyperlink here so that we can click on your, um, on your repository. There's an edit button so that we can click on this report so that we can easily edit this thing. All um, sections must be formatted like normal markdown, but please use the number scheme here because um, it's simpler for you in the table of contents to review this. I will show you later on the example. When it comes down to, to um, uh, URLs in the text, uh, here is an example for a hyperlinked URL where, where this is the text and the hyperlink shows up in the, in the end, but it's not sufficient to do this. You actually have to create a reference to this and the reference is being listed at the end here on your paper in the reference section. So you have, have this. I will go into the reference section a little later. Um, so 
so that's that's how you do hyperlinks. And uh, this sample may have some some examples where it's not yet done completely. Like for example, here this section here, it's not yet completed. So this is not a good example there. Figures are included in the following way. You have here an exclamation mark and the hyperlink to the figure, but it's important that the figure is being listed under raw. And that's, uh, that's in order for us to make sure that GitHub renders it properly and that our uh, cyber training website renders it properly. You cannot yet use, uh, you cannot leave off this information here. This information is super important and must be added to it. Underneath the figure, you will be putting the caption that uh, you put in there. Now, one thing that's important, in case this image were to have been copied by someone uh, from somewhere in the web, you must be including a citation after this, after this um, a caption, and the citation must be um, properly done in your reference section. Otherwise, this paper, this image would be plagiarized, and you would receive an F for your uh, for your plagiarism thing. And uh, we know that you do this by accident; that you may have forgotten to copy this by accident. But it's really important that you do this in your final thing because you will get point deductions for this. Um, then uh, they're using here um, a wonderful markdown features, like for example, a bold fat thing here. Um, you could be also doing another section if you want to, uh, but, but this is all nicely done. Uh, so as you can see here, this particular student has already started working on his um, um, images inclusion, uh, all with lowercase. He uses capital letter here, which is all right. That's no problem, we can, we can accept this. This is, this is fine. The important thing is, is it doesn't have any ampersets in there, you know, and it, and it places it in there to the right directory. A paper must have a conclusion and an acknowledgement section. And um, uh, what you will have is, is you will have a reference section. And the easiest way is, is, is to figure out how these things look like. You, you can use JobRef as a tool. You can fill out the JobRef form and it will be spitting you out a format like this. Only thing that you need to be making sure is, is, is remove all uh, HTML tags from here and the hyperlink that you have at the end uh, should just be in um, uh, square brackets. Uh, you don't have to use numbers for your references as I show here. This is for example, in some, some cases it's much easier to have like a label that reminds you about what the reference is, especially if you reuse it multiple times. Uh, then you just use the label and our rendered uh, document will come out with proper numbering. And I showcase this now. So this is the raw file. When you, when you do the paper report, just copy it from here. When you do the, um, the rendering of this particular report, uh, now I have to go to the report page and this is the report number 12 here. Uh, this is how it is being rendered. So as you can see, is, is there's an edit link here. You can click on this. And if you click on this, it goes straight in into your report. You have to double check this, um, if this all works. Um, then when we go back and there's also, also the, the link to the home directory. And one important part is, is, is when we do the home directory link, uh, you must be updating your README YAML file. This is super important for, for me, actually, because I'm uh, generating these reports uh, across different semesters. And uh, from here, we will be automatically generating this web page, the report web page that you just saw. And uh, it's, it's super important for you to add this particular information there and do it just like the student. If you have, uh, if you're multiple authors, the author that has the project in his uh, repository must be listed first. And then you just add another student with his FID later on. And if you are not the first author, you just copy the project information that this particular author that the first author has in his directory into your readme. Um, as you can see, this is being properly rendered. A table of contents is automatically added. A keyword section is added, just as in the raw file. The headlines are done. Here you have an example for the data that it is using. And here is an example for the 
footnote. One thing to note about the footnotes is, is, is we use them just out of convenience at this time because we didn't want to make it more complicated for you. Uh, so they don't have, they are not, not uh, um, on the main line, they're here in the superscript uh, form and they don't have a bracket, open bracket closed around. Don't worry about this. This will be done automatically at one point with our web page generation tool. We just use the footnotes so that you have an easier time to, to, to see them rendered in GitHub uh, itself. So as you can see, these hyperlinks are not yet properly done, uh, but he has included a wonderful picture and as you can see here, there is uh, uh, no citation here, which could be an issue. In case he didn't generate this image himself, it could be that he generated that image. And this is one, one of the, the things that he's actually working on in his full-time job. Uh, then he doesn't have to probably do that. But if he were to copy this from some other person, then he needs to have a citation here at the end. Uh, so then um, as you see, this is, he has already put some figures in, but the figures do not include yet figure number one, figure number two, figure number three, like here, the caption, uh, because he is currently working on this. So this is not yet perfect. Well, here he actually did something, right? So what he needs to be then describing what each one of these figures is, is showcasing, uh, which he seems to be doing. Um, and then um, um, he has here a plan, what he's needing to do next. The conclusion is still missing. He has the acknowledgement. And as you can see in the reference section, the hyperlinks are all showing up nicely. And as you see here is even the numbering of the footnotes is being done nicely. And here you see the USGS uh, footnote, which was not a number and the numbers are automatically renumbered for you. This is uh, really completing the, the report um, um, uh, overview. And you, you, you have an example on how to do this nicely. Um, and remember, this is a student that is doing that. So the report will be updated uh, um, probably weekly. Remember that I go in into this report. If I if I detect something wrong, I will be putting a comment in at the top. Uh, so I need to be putting a comment, and not all hyper uh, not all references for hyperlinks have been done yet correctly. So, uh, but that is uh, that's a minor point. Um, yeah. Any questions co concerning the report format? If not, then I just go, go move on. So this was the report format. Uh, there is this uh, Piazza posts. Uh, oh, uh, we were actually in the FAQ. Uh, so we were here in the FAQ. Um, uh, so we were on file names, we were how the report looks like. Um, then there is a comment about reports without programming. The only students that are allowed to have a report without programming are undergraduates. And um, I had a conversation with one of the teams and um, uh, I once more reiterated that we are saying, when you're working in a team, this is also valid for programming projects. You cannot look, make your report look like that only a single person has actually worked on this report. This is also, including the volume of the, of the, of the report. So if, for example, Jeffrey said is our report takes that many words. That's a report for one person. If you have a report that is being written by two or three people, then you naturally need to be considering to enhance your, your number of, of words, or I wouldn't say even words, the, compre the comprehension of, of what you are actually looking at needs to be having a much larger scoop with much larger scope comes typically a much bigger report. Now for reports that don't have any projects, then a lot of em emphasis you must be spending on the citations and making sure that you cite, cite important papers relating to your report. Uh, you also may have to review if someone has already written a report about the topic that you have done and maybe even citing those. Uh, formal writing, we already pointed that out. Um, we, you don't have to use the word I in your, even in your proposal. Um, in fact, uh, when, when you do your final report, uh, we have uh, um, that wonderful phrase, they shall not use the word I in a report. So just please do that. And I put in here some, some general comments. Although you can use the word V and U um, in formal writing, it's typically not used. 
for other relations, if you uh, use the term artificial intelligence, you put like a bracket behind it, then you can use AI. However, in many cases, you don't need to have um, abbreviations in case you, for example, use this word only once, or if, you, uh, if the readability of your paper gets increased by uh, not using abbreviations. Like for example, you could have 50 abbreviations and write a single sentence just with the word is and though in it, uh, the in it, and some verbs in it and having 50 abbreviations in there, that doesn't help, help you. So uh, in my view, if you refer to, for example, big data, don't use BD, use big data. Uh, that's much easier to read. We have an issue with colons. I don't know why that is the case. There are multiple students that, who are putting a space in front of a colon. This has in Markdown a particular uh, negative uh, implication. We have a rule, they shall not use spaces before a colon ever. So don't, don't do that. Um, um, and I don't know where, why that's the case. Maybe there are some languages that uh, require you to do a space in front of a colon. Um, uh, we see this, uh, however, both with uh, native English, but also uh, non-native English speakers. So I, I, I don't know what the, uh, what the thing is. Quotes. Uh, one of the interesting parts this is, is, is for us, we actually have a, uh, uh, we have a plagiarism checker that we sometimes use that parses your paper for quotes. I have actually written that thing. Um, uh, uh, and uh, quotes uh, should not be used if you highlight a word. So like, for example, when you want to highlight a particular word, then you should be using italic and not quotes. Quotes are reserved for, uh, for paragraphs that you copy from other people's papers with a reference and citation behind it. This makes it easier for me to, for example, kick in my plagiarism checks because I can look at your quotes. We also found um, one paper that had um, in uh, two pages almost 90% uh, text quoted. Uh, you may want to revisit uh, the strategy and review how to write a paper um, with a less quotation. So you should not just uh, pick have a series of quotes being your paper. That is not a paper. I mean, that's pretty unusual professionally to have long quotes. Yeah, so in, in this case, have references and short summaries. It's very but, rare to quote in a professional paper. And uh, the one thing that we found in this particular paper, uh, the quotes were even over multiple sentences. I mean, the quotes weren't wrong. They related to the, to the paper. I'm just saying that uh, now my daughter in her high school classes is taught to use lots of quotes, but uh, it's not how I believe um, scientific papers tend not to use quotes. Uh, that that is correct. But they state the answer. They say this paper did the following with a citation. It does not say this paper's abstract was, and then quote the abstract. You have uh, to yes. put it into your own words. For some reason, we see, uh, uh, we see from students that are from a uh, business school, uh, psychology, um, uh, the following uh, potential mistakes. They use a lot of quotes and they use um, uh, APA um, citation guidelines. So they say, um, von Neumann uh, said on October 24th, uh, 19 uh, or 19 something, uh, this and that and the other, and they put this all in quotes. We are not interested about this. What we would be interested in is, is, is the fact of what is the actual issue. If you, for example, um, invented the parallel architecture, we would be related, uh, or the, the von Neumann architecture, we would be relating uh, the von Neumann architecture is being used in our project. And then the von Neumann architecture, then you can put a, uh, put a citation behind it without quoting him. And, and then you will be uh, expected to figure out what the von Neumann architecture is. This is much shorter, much more precise for scientific papers than uh, saying as this von Neumann um, uh, in his uh, revolutionary paper invented the uh, um, uh, von Neumann architecture and let me quote you something from the paper. That's completely useless. We don't need that. We want to have short, precise sentences about the facts that are being there.
And then the same thing with the uh, APA um, citation. Don't write von Neumann 2020. That's APA style. We used IEEE style with the footnotes that we have introduced. Jeffrey, do you have any other comment there? No, I agree with that. We should, but I'm, you know, I mean, if somebody used the wrong reference style, I doubt if we, we, that we won't froth at the mouth. We'll just recommend the other reference style. And uh, that's correct. Um, and then uh, update on the submission. As I said, this is you need to be updating your readme.yaml file. And uh, you can uh, check in that report page if your report comes up correctly. That report will be updated, or this page here will be updated once a week. Um, typically, I update it twice a day. Uh, so, um, but I don't want to promise this. Uh, so don't send me an email, hey, update this. Uh, you, you can revisit this. You can also go to the web page and see if it's updated. And then you can uh, subscribe to GitHub to even see if you want to get an update from this uh, cyber training website. Uh, references and citations, here's how we do it. Um, so it's very clearly documented there. And um, so um, uh, there's actually a slight mistake here now, which came in from this web page. The dot needs to be without a space um, before the bracket. And then here again, uh, there must be not a space in front of colon. Uh, URLs and text I already pointed out. Images that you copied, make sure they are cited, uh, cited properly. Python programs, put them in your Python folder. Data, put that into your data folder, but make sure that they are not uh, um, committed. And here's the comment about uh, OS pass and uh, requests. And I do recommend that you use requests instead of URL lib um, uh, or any of the other typical Python libraries because request is the one that you will be using in future. Uh, probably when you when you're getting hired and writing Python programs instead of URL. Um, there are some posts to this images. Uh, you can create them as matplotlib, bokeh, seaborn, or many others. We recommend that you do a safe function in your Python programs or notebooks that save the current uh, method to a file, and then use that file for your inclusion into the report. In the in fact, actually save it directly to project slash images under the file name that you want to cite in the paper. This way you can rerun your notebook. And uh, if you cite the proper thing in, in your paper, it will be automatically included correctly into your paper. Uh, your projects must include a benchmark. For that benchmark, uh, we do recommend, uh, highly recommend that you use Cloud Mesh Benchmark, which has a stopwatch function and the benchmark print function. There's a post in Piazza that uh, points you to that uh, particular um, Example, there's even a video posted on this that I, that I shot, uh, uh, or maybe even Vibasa shot this, I, I can't remember anymore. So either me or him. And, um, and that showcases you how to do this. And, um, and this is very convenient because then you don't have to reinvent the wheel. We have the template links at the very end of this page that showcase you to the template. Then the only other thing that I have to, um, explain is our Piazza posts. The Piazza posts um, showcases you, this is the one that's here on uh, here saying reminder project updates. This thing will be updated if I see something that we haven't addressed yet and explains where you should be at this time. You should be having finalized your project. You should have a clear template used in Markdown. We no longer accept any Word documents. Uh, you should have a meaningful temp uh, content in your report about what you're doing so that the TAs can uh, um, can accept this. And by the way, the reason why I use TA is, is because AI in this class has a specific meaning. <laughs> and I, I, want to, I want to avoid uh, uh, using this. That's the reason why I always use TAs instead of AIs. Um, uh, now, uh, you should have a background section. This is really super important. Um, so you should not just say, say oh, I do this without having researched what other people have actually done. And if other people have done the same project as you, you should probably cite this. And um, typically it's good to have a novel component in some form on your paper. We pointed that out previously in several meetings here. And um, um, the task is not to just take a notebook from someone else and rerun it and then, and then write a report about someone else's work. That's not really that exciting. 
Uh, I mean, it can be done, but I don't think you apply your best if you are doing that strategy. Uh, you ha should have a reference section. And as, a, as I said, this is the easiest thing is to use JavaRef and copy the uh, citation into the paper. Uh, if you have JavaRef already, make sure you commit your bit, bit tag file. Figures must be having captions, as I said. Here's the report. And um, uh, then we describe the stuff with the data. And there is a, the number of words. I, I have to be honest, this is something that Vibatha may have to look up. I forgot how many words we have settled on. And um, uh, as I pointed out, this, 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 um, I had a meeting with a group with multiple people uh, that said, well, but I only have to write that many words. Uh, and they cited the number of words for a single person report. And that is not correct. Uh, this should not be the case. Your report, if you work with multiple people together, you should have a substantially more bigger report. In the project case, if you were to have a programming example, naturally it could be that the report has that many words, but you have many, many more programming examples that uh, justify why your report is relatively short. But if you write a report only without programming, there's no justification that you have the minimal amount of words. Uh, for a single person, because that would be three people, right? Uh, so your report should not look like when you have three people in your group that it could have been written by a single person. Um, uh, then uh, the one thing that I have not yet put in the FAQ is this is you need to be providing links or citations to your scripts into your paper. And uh, that is something that's due this week. Uh, you should be, uh, in case you want to use images, you should be this week trying to figure out how do you include images in, into your paper and make that improvement to your uh, report. Uh, you definitely should have completed the background section so that you can figure out you know, what, you, uh, what other people have done. The readme must be completed this week, as I said. And then... Um, uh, the benchmark should be started. You should be using the benchmarks in your Python programs. Uh, that's from my point of everything. And then uh, the one important thing is, is you, you ought to be having this week completed the download function. And uh, in Sutia's case, um, Vibatha can help you on this. Gregor, I looked up the project links Software projects are 2,500 to 3,000 words for one person. Each team member adds an additional 400 words. And for a paper report, it's 3,000 words with each team member adding 600 words. Do you have the link to that, uh, to that post? I, I do. I can put it. In. It's, it's the uh, Google. It's a Google Doc. Oh, a Google Doc. Yeah, just, yes. just for what I, I'm sure it's cited in the homework. Yeah, just forward me the link once more. I add it to this page so that there is no question about it. Fine. Yeah. Um, so I will do this after the meeting. So there will be an information coming with the link to that page. And I will put that also in the, the FAQ. So um, uh, that's from my perspective, everything. If there's nothing else to be done, maybe Vibasa can help suit here with his technical problem. They can, oh, I, uh, I think I will send in separate mail because I am on company's laptop. I don't have the code right now. It is in my personal laptop. Oh, that's that's totally fine. Yeah. Yes. Okay, fine. Thanks. So what what I suggest is this is um, and get a meeting schedule with Vibatha. I don't okay. know what his weekend schedule looks like. Um, and typically, the TAs uh, seem to be uh, also having some private life at one point, right? Yeah. Right. Right. No, so, I, I want to try my my side like one more time and, and if I, I don't want to give up and then if I don't find then I'll talk to Vibata on maybe Monday. Yeah. Whatever yeah, is sure. updated, I can post it. Uh, I can update my uh, template and then uh, I can talk to you. Thank you. Uh, just, yeah, I just have one simple question. So the file you are trying to download, it's like a CSV file, right? PSV file, that's right. So if you paste that URL in your browser, if you go to that link, uh, you can see the raw CSV file on your browser, right? Yes, I can see that. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm sure it's just the raw stuff. 
And so before, before we finish, I just want to uh, um, put Alexander's uh, report up. As you see, Alexander, we have uh, made some comments here. I actually, uh, so your original uh, report wasn't yeah, in the right format. So I, I, I converted it for you in this format. Uh, by this time, you should have already references. You should have already a background section. You should have a data set description. Uh, so this is the original uh, plan. This is actually good that we have it still in here. This is what some, some student would have to submit originally. Uh, but what we, what we are currently looking for is a much more expanded version of this and really a snapshot of what you are doing right now. And uh, be reminded that um, you, you know um, uh, this is something the TAs are looking for. I'm not doing the grading, so I highly recommend that uh, uh, anybody that is in the same situation here um, uh, puts a little bit more effort in, in into making sure that the uh, uh, that the current state of the report is looking like a snapshot to the final report rather than a proposal. Uh, so that's that's where we. We currently are. Um, uh, 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 your your first name is Alexander, right? Yes, yes. I just do you do you have any questions concerning this, or do you have any concern? Yeah. I was going to go to office hours today to sort of ask a couple of questions about that, but you guys answered most of them. I've just been yeah. Uh, don't hesitate to, to use the office hours. There are uh, as you as you know when we when we go to our Piazza web page. Uh, the resources has a staff page in here. The staff page has the office hours posted and the office hours are also augmented with a um, Zoom link uh, uh, so that you can utilize the Zoom link. And so today Lingjiu uh, has office hours from one to two. I haven't gone to that session for the last yeah. two weeks, so. Yeah, if he is not there yeah. uh, for some reason, I mean, the, the TAs could have had some other, other issue sickness or maybe some emergency pops up, just um, uh, send an email to Piazza and try to, to ask Vibatha to come online, right? Yeah. And uh, send him directly an email via Piazza. So this, has, has been on the Friday office hours every day, well, each Friday. So yeah. it, ha it hasn't been an issue yet, but okay. I will if that does pop up. Okay. Well, yeah, we, we, we got some reports that sometimes uh, they couldn't connect with the TAs. And I just want to point out to you that you do have the right if a TA doesn't show up to uh, ask the TA uh, to show up at another time so that you can, uh, uh, can get them. Yeah, please ask and use Piazza. And sometimes you can even ask questions openly, like for example, the download function. That's a fundable topic for, for an open question to everybody. That's what we would normally do in an, in a residential class anyway. We would be saying, okay, now let's write a download function, right? And uh, uh, the students would be doing this, not the T, not the instructors, uh, and and you um, uh, would be developing this all together. And Piazza is essentially the the, the mechanism vehicle that you could be using for it. Okay. Uh, so I'm finished with the presentation. Any other question? Okay, next week I will probably discuss, um, go back to a topic, probably talking about AI for image-based applications. And um, if you have any, any comments, please send them. Thank you very much, everybody. That's the end of this session. Thank you.